Hello? Hello? Friends, I'm not going to speak for real long, but it's time not just to put this nation in our hearts, it's time to put Israel in our hearts. We always got to put God's country in our hearts. And as we live in this world, we need to lose the fear of this world. Man, woman, politics, pestilence, and gain a fear in the Lord, the God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm going to read Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall fall before you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest, your, or lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall come upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is Psalms 91. It speaks of fear. And we're living in a world of fear. This world, I see people walking in their homes, in their cars with masks on. Why? to conform to the world. Isaiah 35 verse 4 says, Say to those who are fearful hearted, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense of God. He will come and save you. Open your eyes. There's only one way to be saved and that's Jesus Christ. It's not Muhammad. It's not Allah, it's not Baal, it's not religion, it's Jesus who died for all. So many people come to churches with deaf ears and then they cry as they're in the church. And then when they go home, they put it in a trunk like a ventriloquist dummy. And they get controlled by the world to be different. I say stand tall like a Joshua 1-9 courage. Fight for your Lord God. Stand for God. Not for a lowercase g, God. For the God of Israel. Who has died, manifested as a man. And came to redeem every single one of us. My friends, the unbelievers in Apostle Paul's days, they couldn't even deny the power of Christ. 
And the reasons why we do, because the Western civilization has created a God for their own needs. A Jesus that fits your sin to say it's okay. Jesus left us with peace. John 14, verse 27, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you have a fear in Jesus, you would drop the fear that the government has put upon us. See, the great falling away that the Bible talks of is happening. There's no faith in God. There's faith in man, faith in science, faith in masks, not in Jesus. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, reads, give me a second, because the wind is fighting me. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together in Him, we ask you not to be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had came. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Lamer terms the Antichrist. My friends, the falling away has happened. It has happened. Look around. Jesus in John 14 verse 6 said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So woe to this pale form of the government that you follow that says abortions are okay that says the sexual acts of disgrace are okay. You will not inherit the kingdom of God if you continue to think it is okay and not come to repentance over this. That's a wake up call. That's something to First Timothy chapter 3 or wait is that what I wrote on there 4 I mean 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 through 3 now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from faith Knock, knock, that's what's happening. They'll give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidden to marry. A command to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. My friends, Forbidden to be husband and wife. <laughs> That's where we're at. Listen, Jesus is coming. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This world is doomed. For one reason, my friends, we put God on the back burner. Stop killing children and sacrificing them to the ancient gods of Baal. We don't have sex. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 15. For the day of the Lord upon all nations is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your appraisal shall return upon your head. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. 
He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So turn to Jesus. That's your only mercy. Turn from the fear of a pestilence, from the fear of a mask, and rely on God to bring all whole again. Good news, my friends. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, my friends, Jesus. If you believe in Him as the Lord of your life, the Savior of your soul, the King of all, the Christ that sits at the right hand of God, confess your sins to Him who has died for all. Jesus, when the nail was driven through the cross 2,000 years ago, it fulfills the Messianic prophecy from Genesis chapter 3. He struck the head of the serpent to end death, which is sin, once and for all. So come into thy house is what God wants. Fellowship, not social distancing. This is a church. I stand as a church. Not four walls where a denomination teaches you lies. It's time to listen to the truth. It's time to get out of fear. The falling away has happened. It is your choice. Jesus did the dirty work for you 2,000 years ago. If you hear my voice and you feel compelled, drop where you're at and pray to Jesus Christ. If you feel compelled to come to me, I will pray for you. I will hug you. I will have no fear because the Lord God is upon me. A hug is maybe all you need right now. In a world full of no love. In a world full of division. Luke 4.18 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind. To set liberty to those who are oppressed. That's the world we live in, my friends. So come and have a fear in the Lord, not in something that man has instituted. I will hug you, and no sickness will fall upon me. For the Lord is not a God who leads his soldiers in the dark. He is with me wherever I go. Amen to that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. In his name, unity of all colors will come. The government creates division. The they scare us to be their slaves. So I want to say amen. God bless America. God bless Israel. God bless the world. And remember, in 2 Chronicles, Chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from the heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit to God. And even the devil will flee. I don't care if anyone laughs at me. If thinks what I'm saying is funny. It's your fault that you mock God. Because he puts a word in his anointed people. That have a backbone. That don't take you to Disneyland churches. And say hey. It's okay. Continue to fortificate and not marry and be sorry for it but then turn around and do it again the churches nowadays are teaching you lies I am bringing you the gospel the same gospel that Jesus walked in the streets 
The same gospel that the Apostle Paul walked in the streets. The same gospel that all 12 of his disciples brought. When we die and go to heaven, we are all one color. We are all one blood. We are all one body of Christ. Open your eyes, we're in the falling out. What was the first thing the government said to not do? Go to church. Why? Because they fear God. Not in the way they should, but they fear because they know their days are numbered. Jesus Christ is the only one that will bring unity. He's the only one that will bring healing. Not Dr. Fauci, not Bill Gates, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the great I am, I am, the great physician. When he died, he gave his gift of the Holy Spirit upon us. That people could just fall in the shadow of Apostle Paul and be healed of their infirmities, be healed of their sicknesses. Why is sickness at an all-time high? Have you applied God to any of this? Or have you relied on man? Why is division so high? Because we rely on government to fix it? Or we need to rely on Jesus to fix it? My friends, the days will come when every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that the Lord is my God. One last thing before I close in prayer. First John chapter 5 verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Our time to break the generational curses. Our time of breaking the bondage that Satan has put on your life is over. Time to listen to the only fact checker that was given to us. And that is the Holy Bible. You want to be unlost? Turn to Jesus. You want to be made whole? Read your Bible. And quit relying on what man instituted. Father God, we pray to you today. We pray for the lost souls to be broken from the bondage of Satan. We pray that the lost souls will turn to you, Jesus. We pray that more people will realize we're in a falling out and stop living in this pagan world and realizing we live in a world of idolatry. We live in a world where a great falling out has happened, Lord. I pray that their eyes open, their hearts open, and they see the compassion, not as anger that is coming out of me, but compassion that I care enough to speak the truth. As the government lies, Lord, let their tongues be twisted so they continue to not spread false doctrine. Bound their tongues in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for Israel. I pray for your mighty country, the apple of your eye. That everyone will realize if you don't have love and unity for Israel, then there is no love and unity in your heart. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters to lose the fear of a pestilence that they've lived in for a year and a half almost. And realize that you are still alive only because of God. We pray all of this in the one and only true name that matters, in Jesus Christ. Amen.